Hello and welcome to Medical Dialogues. I am Dr. Nandita Mohan and today I have a very interesting topic to discuss with you all. Now we all are aware of the rising cost of medical education in our country. The pinching cost of medical education in many places has gone beyond 25 lakhs per annum running to the tune of crores for a tenure of 5 years. So in certain circumstances it seems that the affordability of medical education is actually getting out of hand not only for the lower class but also for the middle class population. In these times, bringing a breath of fresh air, we have come across the recent launch of Sri Madhusudan Sai Institute of Medical Sciences and Research. This college is established with a vision of decommercializing medical education and healthcare and aims to provide free of cost medical education and quality medical care to all. This indeed has never been achieved before. The institute will start functioning in the academic year 2023 and it was recently inaugurated by the Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi on 25th of March 2023 who called Satya Sai Gram a wonderful model of service. This dharti ne Satya Sai Gram ke roop mein bhi seva ka ek adbhut model desh ko diya hai. Siksha aur swast ke madhyam se जिस प्रकार मानव सेवा का मिशन यहां चल रहा है वो वाकई अद्भुत है आज जो यहां मेडिकल कॉलेज शुरू हो रहा है इससे मिशन और सशक्त हुआ है इट सीम्स दैट द अथॉरिटीज हैव नॉट लेफ्ट एनी स्टोन अनटर्न्ड इन टर्म्स ऑफ क्वालिटी केयर the Sri Madhusudan Sai Institute of Medical Sciences and Research, which comprises of facilities with a total area of about 3,25,000 square feet, is a unique and first-of-its-kind project. Joining us today to talk to us about the college is Sadhguru Sri Madhusudan Sai. Now, let me tell you about Sadhguru Sri Madhusudan Sai. Since 2011, Sri Madhusudan Sai has established institutes of excellence that brings respite to thousands of underprivileged and needy children through free healthcare, free education and even free nutrition. Today, 11 speciality hospitals in India and 4 hospitals and 3 medical centers overseas in Fiji, Sri Lanka, USA and Nigeria are all providing free healthcare. 37 educational institutions across 27 campuses, a university in South India and three institutions in Laos, Nigeria and Australia are providing values-based education to over 5,000 boys and girls. A morning nutrition program nourishes over 12 lakh school-going children every single day in India and across five countries. All services are offered absolutely free of cost to all without any discrimination. We welcome you to Medical Dialogues, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Nandita and Medical Dialogues uh, for inviting us to share our thoughts on your channel. And I'm sure this interaction will be very useful for many more people who resonate with this cause of making medical education more accessible and affordable and healthcare more available, especially to the needy sections of the society. So we are very thankful for the time. Thank you so much. Sir, on behalf of the medical fraternity and the medical students, I have some questions for you today. The Satya Sai Grama was started almost four decades ago. So walking in the footsteps of Baba, you are actually furthering Baba's mission. If you can tell us about your mission. The Satya Sai Grama was founded by a great uh, visionary and the son of the soil, uh, Maria Narayan Bhatt, who followed in the footsteps of Baba and established an educational institution in Satya Sai Grama. And for almost over four decades, it just remained a school. And then it added a pre-university college about 10 to 15 years ago. But now it has grown into a university where there are all kinds of uh, courses uh, provided in sciences and humanities, even in Vedic studies, in performing arts. And now we're going to start agricultural as well as sports related courses. And all this is being offered completely free of cost to the students. They have to just come with a pair of clothes on their body and they get their degree for free. And after that, they also have an opportunity to get employed with us, to intern with us, and thereby they can actually spend their whole life, even if they want to, that they, in the institutions where they get paid also very well. So it's kind of a holistic approach to education where education leads to employment, to gainful employment. And this is Baba's vision that education should always be free. And he has uh, made it very clear in his lifetime as well as now through 
whatever teachings he has left behind that education should never become a commodity and that was not how it was in ancient india where gurukulas were providing education to all without any discrimination and without any fee whatsoever princes or paupers everybody was eligible to come and get an education so we are simply following the ancient indian ideal of education being available and made free freely available to one and all without discrimination great sir so coming to talk about free education a free medical education with all facilities has actually never been heard of previously we have heard about many hospitals and medical colleges offering charitable setups that actually provide free treatment facilities but free medical education that to at the graduate level is definitely something new so if you can tell us what's the story behind the opening of this establishment and also your motivation so extending the same idea of education being free to the medical field where we found that a lot of children aspire to become doctors especially from rural india and uh, they probably have the ability they have the capacity but they do not have the opportunity to realize their dream and one case in hand i want to specifically mention which i also happened to mention to the prime minister when he was here there was a little girl from this local village of mudinalli where satya sai grama is situated and she was the she is the daughter of the cook who is serving in our institutions and she came to me and told me that she wanted to become a doctor that was 7 years ago i asked her why and she said i want to serve the people in the rural areas i think that's something that was nice to hear and i wanted people to join our mission to serve in the rural areas which is where most of our hospitals are established so we enabled her we educated her we trained her to write the exam medical entrance exam get into a good medical college and 7 years later she's a doctor joining us back in our own hospital at mudai hali here so that is the that is something that really uh, made us feel so fulfilled a rural girl who cannot speak english but wants to become a doctor goes out and competes with the students coming from the best of the institutions in the country who are who are much more privileged than her yet she finds a place for herself in that area of medical education which is highly competitive with the support of the institution of course and she finishes her mbbs and joining us for her postgraduate studies now so this is the dream of so many rural children in india especially women especially girls and that is that is something that we want to make it happen for them so as an institution we are very committed to the cause of rural education especially rural girls education because they due to various circumstances they are not allowed to pursue their higher studies and as you also would see that after covid it has become so clear that rural india is where we need all the help that's where there are no hospitals or even if there are hospitals there are no properly trained technicians or medical professionals doctors let alone specialists even general physicians are not available that's where most of the children are born that's where most of our mothers are that's where our young india is growing and they need to be skilled they need to be healthy they need to be fed and that's when we can even realize this 5 trillion dollar dream when everyone is included in this realization of the dream which is what the prime minister said sabka prayas everybody's effort is needed in order to realize this dream of a developed india by the 100th independence year so we are working towards that goal and education is just one thing healthcare is also entirely free in our institutions because again healthcare is not a commodity is what baba told us and we are simply following its footsteps in 10 years we have established almost 10 hospitals these are super specialty hospitals pediatric cardiac care is our main thrust that's where we need all the help and uh, medical college is kind of a natural progression of things because we set up hospitals in rural areas that we found very difficult to find good doctors in rural areas we had to bring them from urban areas and they used to come with their own conditions we are lucky to have found many good inspired doctors but we needed more and that's when we thought if we develop a medical college of our own where their doctors can be trained in an inspired way where they want to commit to a life of service to the rural and the underprivileged then we would be really contributing to this country and to the world and that is how this medical school came into existence it's again free you can clear your neat exam and you can just walk in with a pair of clothes on your body and you can get a degree so that is how it has been designed that's very touching sir for sure now more important from the standpoint of medical students uh, please if you can tell us about the facilities that have been provided at your institute 
As you know, all the medical education in India is guided and governed by the National Medical Commission, mm -hmm. which uh, has a certain set of rules and uh, things to be followed. So naturally, the infrastructure as well as the faculty and all the other programs in terms of academic as well as residential facilities, all these are at par with any institution that gets a permission to start a medical college in India as per the NMC regulations. So there is no compromise whatsoever in terms of quality, in terms of number of faculty, in terms of the facilities that are to be provided because otherwise you won't get the permission from NMC. So we are very fortunate to we have got the permission in the month of February and that's how we could invite the Prime Minister. So this, at present the campus is spread all across 150 acres or so and it constitutes of residential facilities like the hostels for the students. It has got its academic block and administration block which uh, houses the faculty and various departments, the labs, the lecture halls and all other academic facilities, the research program facilities. We also have the teaching hospital which is an integral part of a medical education setup. So we have a 360 bedded teaching hospital and it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's entirely free so it's a very busy hospital on any given day we see more than 1000 outpatients and uh, close to around 300 inpatients is the occupancy of our hospital almost every day. So it's, it provides you with great um, uh, variety of cases because we are free, all kinds of patients from all parts of the country come here. So it's a great opportunity for the people who want to study medicine because they get hands-on experience, practical experience and they get to see a variety of patients and cases. So their experience here is, be very, is going to be very rich. So at the same time, you also have a large uh, <clears throat> program in research. We do genomics research in all our hospitals where we study about the reasons for congenital heart diseases and we are now looking at doing more research in oncology, diabetes and other NCDs like cardiac issues which are becoming you know, kind of pandemic in India. So we have also, we are in the process of setting up a research lab here also in this place and a lot of other institutions we have tied up with who are uh, contributing towards the academic programs and training programs voluntarily because they, they feel that this is something that they must support. We also have received support from various corporates, pharmaceutical industry, many academicians in the field of medicine from India and abroad to design the program. And it is a very holistic program because we have completely residential facilities. We also include a daily schedule which consists of your basic yoga, prayers and uh, certain spiritual activities because this is a kind of an ashram. This is a spiritual setup. So the children grow holistically. They just don't grow intellectually, but they also evolve spiritually in this process. It's something that we are very particular about. And I think this whole thing together is the medical education program at this point in time. That's commendable. Uh, so sir, for an example, if I am a poor or a middle class student who actually cannot afford the private college fees, how actually will I get into your institute? Please, if you can throw some light into this regarding the admission or the selection criteria. Now, as you previously mentioned, it is through the neat entrance that one has to clear to apply. So apart from that, is there any other criteria that is required? As you mentioned that uh, for a person coming from a rural background, from a vernacular background, what we are doing is we already have schools which are running over here. So we have a lot of rural students already in. They're generally from a disadvantaged backgrounds. So we take them in early and then we are training them after 10th board into preparation for NEET exam so that they get used to speaking or writing in English and then they get used to writing exams so they can write NEET exam at the end of their 12th board and as the, uh, as the case may be and then they can qualify. Once they qualify, literally we do not have any control over the kind of people that we want to take in. It's completely decided by the government. But what we are insisting upon is an undertaking by the child that after the MBBS degree, the student would serve in any of these institutions, of course paid service for a certain number of years. For instance, the child must serve for as many years as he or she studies with us. So if it's an undergraduate program, five years of service. If it's a postgraduate program, three years of service. If it's undergraduate plus postgraduate program, it's eight years of service. So this way the child is also able to get the employment. It's not just something that we are binding the child by because the opportunity to do good internships is very 
less in our country and working in good colleges where you get a lot of expertise a lot of experience is also very rare to come by so that is something that they are already getting so from their education they get the employment as well and enriched experience in terms of their medicine so this is the complete cycle on selection of students we really do not have much control there are certain government criteria we must follow all of that but we have a um, part of uh, taking children early training them well so that they can compete with all the other children and they can apply for our institution and come in and since there is no fee thereafter if they qualify that is good enough they can join us great sir so overall i really congratulate you for achieving this feat and hopefully there will be more to look forward in the future especially helping the underprivileged and rural population thank you doctor for joining us and uh, you know talking to us i'm sure this interaction will go to many more like minded people through you and your team and that will help many more inspired doctors and academicians to join hands with us and also it will take this news to many aspiring candidates who want to become doctors and who do not know how to go about it this uh, interview would perhaps help them to know about us and that will bring them to us and we look forward to working together with the like minded institutions individuals to make that rural indian child's dream come true of becoming a doctor and we want to be the first country in the world where any child from any part of the world can probably say that if i want to become a doctor i have a way here i need not worry and that is the country we want to create and i hope we all will work together towards that thank you for talking to us thank you for your valuable time it was a pleasure to be talking to you today you. that's all for today stay tuned to medical dialogues for latest updates never miss a medical update from medical dialogues like subscribe and press the bell icon